What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this very exciting vlog, we're going to be fitting this kitchen and from start to finish. Let's get in there. So the first thing when setting out the kitchen is, is we found the dating line. As you can see here, I've set my laser line up. You probably won't really see it because of the light. So what I did to find that mark is I took my, I knew the height of the kick plate and the height of the base unit. And then what I did was I added them together and that gave me the size of 890. And then I held my tape in the middle of the room. It's important to do it in the centre of the room because I took my tape, found the dating round the room and that's how we've got marking both walls that we know is going to be level. Then what I'll do is, I'll, um, because it's quite bright in here, I'll draw that with a pencil and continue with the spirit level and then they'll start setting out. However, today is going to be the main beef of this video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be fitting these lovely grey oak laminate effect worktops in the kitchen. But first, I'll show you all the base units. As you can see, it's a really tiny wee kitchen. 400 drawers here, 600 oven housing, 350 base unit, base unit, base unit. Then we'll have a washing machine over here, and we're going to have our larder fridge unit here. We've still got plenty of wall units to go up, um, but we'll do them after the worktops. I always find it a wee bit easier to do that after the worktops, especially if you need to get your worktops in a tilt or anything. So let's get started on the worktop. 
Right, now we've put the work top in place, we cut it to size um, and it fits perfectly, I scribed it to the back of the wall. Um, so we've got a right hand joint and a left hand joint to do it, so a U shaped kitchen. So what we do is we get the trend jig, um, this is a trend KWJ 700, we use this and um, we're going to be doing the female right hand 90 cut first, so it's really 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 simple to set up. Um, all you do is you get your wee pins, come with the jig, put them in the holes marked F90. Now it's really important that you double check the instructions every single time you do this because um, if you're doing a left hand joint the worktop needs to be upside down if you're doing a right hand joint the worktop needs to be face up and if you do it wrong then you're doing a worktop and that's just unfortunate so all the pins into F90 so three along the front like so F90, F90, F90 and then the most important part is knowing the width of your worktop so as in width this way um, and it's got holes to signify the size, so if you're doing a 700 work top, this jig will fit that. If you're doing a 600 work top, 616 or a 635. This work top is actually a 616, so we're going to go in the 616 hole. Then what we do is we take our jig and we push it tight to the work top from this side and from that side. We get some clamps and we'll clamp it down. So once your jig's set up and you've got a level assistant to hold the hoover, um, it's ready to go with the router. Done the right hand joint, now it's time to flip the work top and we're going to be doing the left hand joint.
is the back top of the back wall um, of our U shape if you like, this is the bottom of it if, it's a, if you're looking at a U. As you can see we've got um, a left hand and a right hand female cut. Now the female cut is the most important part when you're doing the work top because you only get one shot at it because it's on the face. When we do the male cut you get a couple of shots at it because if you mess it up you can just do it again and do it again until you get it right. So really important to take your time when you're doing any routering um, but especially when you're doing the female cut. So if you look at the work top this way you'll see it's like a hockey stick and that's why I call it often hear people call it a hockey joint um, and the next work top will stick up into there. So if you look at the bottom you'll see I've took out, I call them dog bones because when the other one goes into it, it looks like a dog bone shape but the bolt recesses have been done and um, I take them two thirds of the work top so that it can, the, the wee bolt that goes inside it can get a right good bite on it. So I'm going to lift this inside now and this is going to be this work top done in place and then I'm, I won't need to touch this again until I need to cut out the sink. left hand male joint first so what I do is prop up the worktop, cut it a bit longer than what's required, sit this side on this worktop and then this side I sit um, on the off cuts of worktop so it's at the same thickness as that. Then what we do is we go underneath and we'll scribe the worktop in to a female cut and the reason why we do that is because this kitchen is a really old house so it might not be sitting exactly at a right angle so at least if our work top scribed in, it's going to be absolutely perfect. I mean, that's joined together, it's going to be beautiful. Male, uh, the female joints on both sides of the worktop, left hand, right hand, or other way around, doesn't matter. Um, and then what I've done is I've went outside and I've done the male joints on this top and this worktop. So as you can see, if you come up close with the camera, um, this is a joint with no glue and no bolts in it. So I'm going to talk about the bolts for a wee minute for you that don't know. So this is the traditional. That's it. This is a traditional type of bolt that you would get um, under the worktops and you would spend ages and ages doing wee half turns until it was nice and tight together. But in this day and age, some very clever person came up with these type of bolts and basically what you do is when it's in tight at the worktop is you get a wee drill bit like this, a wee allen key bit, put that in and tighten it up and it should, it'll pull the worktop in. It's hard to ex explain but that's the new zip bolts that we get these days. So, Next stage for us, I'm going to put my colour fill along the seams, although these work tops don't need colour fill, you know what I mean? How good they join, sir? Um, and I've got a bit of silicon I'll put on the exposed bit of the work top, so if the colour fill fails, then the, the inside of the work top is going to be sealed, and if there's any water that gets in there, it's going to be safe because we're going to have this. Because it's such a small kitchen as well, this is going to be the sink area, and, and it's probably going to get splashed. The colour fill over the years is probably going to wear off, and it will just. So, good to use that.
So we're on to the hob and sink. Easiest way to do it is, especially for the hob, I find this, it's always a 600 unit underneath the hob because it's always a 600 oven and appliance nine times out of 10. I've never came across one that's different. So the unit underneath, what I do is I find the center, I square that round and then I find the center of the hob, flip the hob upside down because it's an electric one, draw around it, subtract 10 mil for each side and then cut it out. Kitchen with like the black matte handles looks really really nice with the undermount um, the extractor fan. We've really tried to maximise the space um, in this kitchen. So as you can see, most people will say in the comments, and I know you're going to say it, the sink should be centralised. Well, we thought about it. We had a discussion with the client. It's going to be a standalone washing machine in here. So to maximise the work box space, I think if people take the laundry out, or maybe if you want to have a nice microwave here, coffee machine, we really want to maximise this space, and that's why we moved the sink over. We've got the new induction hob here, um, electric, sorry, I said induction, the new electric hob here, new electric oven, fridge freezer in here, um, again it's a really small kitchen to be able to film and, and get these in, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode guys, and stay tuned for the next one.